Hello, everyone. It's time for Van Chicago Land Stories, a podcast. I'm your host, Pete Costanas. This is episode 307, season 13. Today's date is February 18th, 2024, and welcome to the program. On today's show, I will talk about the Limelight slash Excalibur nightclub in Chicago, and I will do my best to explain the history of this nightclub and my memories of this place. Also, I'll talk about Jello Pudding Pops. Ugh, I miss those. Those were awesome. And I'll talk about uh, a little history of that and uh, my memories of that as well. But first, uh, the program will uh, go into a commercial break. And this program is brought to you by Signal Mouthwash. <laughs> I remember this product. So here's a commercial from 1979. And uh, so sit back and relax. And, I'll, re and uh, I'll be right back with the program, folks. Thank you. Just had a hamburger loaded with onions. Kiss me. Onions? Hey, kiss me. I got the signal. Mmm, minty. Signal mouthwash fights strong mouth odors. I just ate garlic bread. Kiss me. Garlic? Oh, come on, kiss me. I got the signal. Hey, nice. Signal fights strong mouth odors. Even garlic, even onions. Gives you fresher, cleaner breath. Clinical tests prove it. A kiss will prove it. Kiss me. I got the signal. Okay, everyone, I am back. I hope you enjoyed the commercial for Signal Mouthwash. Uh, this product came out late 70s uh, and then until the 80s. Uh, you know, back then, it was on television, uh, the commercials that is, there was like a fierce competition between mouthwashes. I remember Scope, there was Listerment, uh, Listerine, um, many others, uh, Lavoris, I think it's still made. <laughs> In the 60s, they had Colgate 100. And uh, so uh, I guess... Uh, it went away, I don't know exactly when, probably mid-80s, late-80s. It was just gone, you know. And uh, I don't know if it's still made. I, I haven't seen it. I doubt it. If it is, it's probably um, somewhere else, uh, somewhere in the, not in the United States. So I doubt it's here. No, I don't think it's here. So it was, uh, they made it a minty mouthwash, like scope. So I guess, I believe uh, it was uh, competing with, with that, you know. And uh, get mouthwash, we all use it. I use it, you know, like the Listerine, you know, the regular Listerine, it doesn't, never tasted good. But then they made it uh, with cool mint, which I like, and that's good. Like it. But, you know, they said that's the best. That's the best one ever. And then it's been on the market for maybe about 100 years. So that's a fascinating history. <laughs> wow. <laughs> okay. All right. At the beginning of the program, I mentioned I'm going to discuss the Limelight slash Excalibur nightclub in Chicago. And I will talk about uh, Jello. Pudding Pops. I'm going to talk about uh, my memories of both of these uh, topics. Before I get started, I want to mention a couple of things. One, uh, of course, it's my health. I will go to the oncologist Thursday, and I am nervous. Very, very nervous. My PSA went up. So I don't know what the doctor's going to do. I, I'm very scared. So it could be anything. It could be... Um, Maybe it's an infection. Maybe it's, uh, I don't know. Oh, it could be the calcium I've had before. You know, it's elevated. He said the last time I saw him that he might try to make, make it go down. Maybe that'll help. I, I don't know. Or try a new medication. I don't know. But I've been tired lately for the past week. Worse than ever, you know, I just lying down, you know, and, uh, but today I'm much better and yesterday too, but the past few days, no, it was like, oh, it was awful, you know, and, and especially at late at night, it was like, oh, I gotta go to bed, you know, it's like, but I'm sleeping okay, that's a good thing, you need your sleep, you need your sleep, 
like that. Uh, second of all, uh, still get comments from people for Van Chicago Land, also the podcast. I uh, had one from another podcast show uh, that he started listening. Uh, he sent me a, uh, he posted this on my page and said uh, he started listening from the first episode. Wow. <laughs> that was a long, long time and he loved it. That's great. That's wonderful. You know, and I should return the favor. I should start listening to him. You know, I will do that uh, when I have time. So that's nice. It's nice. And that, you know, yesterday I had breakfast with a friend of mine uh, from school. And uh, we got into more detail. Uh, he asked me, when did you start Van Chicago Land? When did you start the podcast? What do you talk about? How did you get discovered and all that? I got, well, I won't, I'm not going to explain the whole thing. I just, tell, I just told him everything. And he was, you know, when we were growing up, he was, he was interested in what I do, but not, not really. But now we're adults or old men. <laughs> We we're in the 60s. He uh, he loves it. He has listened to them uh, to a couple episodes, a few, and he's giving me suggestions, and that's great. That's wonderful. I'm I'm very appreciative. You know, I, I love him for that, and that's and that's wonderful. And uh, you know, that touched my heart. It really did. You know, I, I saw him at the reunion last time. You know, for school. You know, from elementary school. So. It's, uh, it's, if you have a friend, we have a long, you know, that you have a friend for a long time, they support you, they like, they love what you do. That's important. That to you, to you, that is awesome to, you know, to support you like that. You know, having friend, you know, having friendships is hard. You know, so that means a lot to me. It really does. And, uh, it's kind of nice. Okay. Right now, I'm going to talk about the Limelight Excalibur slash Excalibur nightclub. Now, this is kind of tricky. Um, the history of it and uh, uh, my memories of it is, um, well, it's memory is kind of sketchy. But the, the history is well, it's kind of sketchy, too. So I'll do my I'll do the best I can to explain this place because it's uh, it was very well known uh, back in the 80s and the 90s and, um, and until today. Uh, but it has changed uh, businesses over the years. And so I'll start in the beginning of what this uh, place was. OK. So, um, let's see what we got here. I don't want to, yeah, just bear with me. So, um, yeah, so this, it was, uh, first this, uh, it was located at 632 North Clark street. And at first it was the Chicago historical society or the Chicago history museum. And uh, it was founded in 1856. Now that's a long, long time ago, and um, and it, it was there from. Uh, how would I say this? Uh, yeah, from 1850s all the way to 1932, and they moved it to. Uh, it was there for 36 years and they moved it to the, its present location, 1601 North Clark Street. To tell you that I've never been there. I wish I could go someday because it's, I love history and it sounds fascinating. It really does. It sounds like a place I would spend hours browsing, looking around and it's like, oh, this is cool. I love this. And uh, so, that survived the uh, the Chicago Fire in 1871. It was one of it was built. It was fireproof. It was amazing, like that. And uh, so then I don't know what was after that. Uh, after 1932, what was it over there? That location? I have no idea. You know, I, I wish someone would 
if someone can comment, please do like that. So anyway, they opened in 1985, they opened the limelight and it was a, um, it was a nightclub. Yeah, it was a nightclub and uh, the light nightclub, uh, it was operated by a man. His name was Peter Gettian. I think that's his name. He was from Canada. And uh, he opened the first uh, limelight nightclub in Florida. And uh, and it was uh, so he brought it back. And uh, let's see. So uh, he opened a few places. He opened in um, New York, London, and also in Chicago. Now. Um, the, I went to this, I went to the limelight once, one time. Uh, I was at DeVry Institute of Technology. I was in college, you know, and uh, I was on a break. A friend of mine from school asked me, you want to go to the limelight? And I said, yeah, why not? You know, so uh, did you bring a date? I go, no, <laughs> I didn't bring a date. So uh, you know what? He said he was going to bring a date, but he didn't, you know, because oh, that was weird because he always had a girl with him all the time. And he had a girlfriend. To, to matter, as a matter of fact, he had a lot of girls. Well, we're not going to that. Anyway, um, so it was just the two of us. And we went in, and he picked me up at my house. We drove over. We drove over there to you know found a parking place and uh, went to the nightclub. We I think it was a Friday night. Yeah, it was a Friday night, and uh, there was a line outside the place, and it was like, whoa, this is uh, kind of cool. And you can hear the music outside, and uh, I'm looking at the architecture and the structure of this building, and it's like. It's nice. It's like an old fashioned medieval castle like that. But uh, you don't expect King Arthur or Guinevere or like, uh, <laughs> you know, showing up, you know, at the round table. No, this was a, this was a nightclub. And uh, we got in, you know, uh, we were over age. So I was about, how, was, how old was I? 22, something like that. Yeah, 22. And uh, we got inside. Uh, it was very loud, very loud. Oh my God! But it was music blaring, uh, crowds, and you know, you know, he kept bumping into each other. They're laughing. They're smoking. Smoking was allowed in the place at the time. You know, you come out of there sometimes, and they're like, <coughs> it's, it's kind of funny. And uh, they had uh, museum cases where uh, I think they were glass. I think they were glasses. I'm not sure. And they had dancers, you know, models dancing, you know, like go-go dancers, like in the 60s. And uh, the main dance floor had a DJ right there. And uh, I did remember, uh, you know, they advertised this on TV. A few times, I think so. Yeah, I, I believe so. They did. So anyway, um, we only stayed for about a couple hours. You know, it was getting it was getting uh, a little too much. You know, for me. And uh, thank God my friend didn't drink. He drank, but he didn't get drunk and all all that. Oh, thank God for that. And um, so it was a. Uh, it was fun. It was a fun experience. I never went back uh, as the limelight. I never went back. So, uh, so we ex I experienced my first time at the limelight, like that. Yeah, it's kind of nice. And then it, in 1989, it changed into the Excalibur. Now, I did go to the Exc I did go there when it was the Ex Excalibur, and that was like 1990. Yeah, 1990. Um, I went with someone. Uh, I had another. Uh, I had a job then, and uh, someone mentioned, uh, "Oh, this is what happened." Uh, the guy had a date. He had a date with a girl, and uh, at the last minute, she canceled. 
for some reason. I don't know why. And he said, Pete, why don't you come with me to Excalibur? All right. I said, I'll meet you there. All right, I'll meet you there. Well, we drove because uh, the place the place of work where we worked at, excuse me, uh, was in Wilmette, you know, up north. And uh, we drove and we had to find parking, you know. Can't mention how parking costs these days now, but it was still expensive. And we went there. Uh, so we went to the Excalibur. So I was trying to compare the Excalibur to the Limelight. And uh, it was not the same, really. Uh, but uh, they had uh, they had live entertainment. They had dancing. They also, they also had you can... Uh, dine you can have dinner uh we did have dinner i forgot what i ate and they had uh pool tables and arcade games you know, I, I like pool i played i played a little pool with them so that was fun yeah i like that and wednesday nights wednesday nights they had live band karaoke night uh i don't think they had karaoke back then maybe they did i, I don't know i didn't see it <laughs> probably so uh, that lasted longer than the limelight, uh, this club. So, um, but there's a legend about this place that it was haunted. Uh, it seems like there was a woman uh, that uh, came floating around the, ca uh, the, the, the castle. She's dressed in white and uh, you heard like, glass shattering or your footsteps like that uh there were some storage rooms there that i think some of the most some of the employees refused to go in because uh, she was in there <laughs> and or they they witnessed some woman in white maybe it was a joke i don't know uh so it's kind of funny like that and so um I didn't see it. I didn't see a ghost like that. Let's say if you had a few drinks over there, maybe you do you do see anything. <laughs> you know, like like uh, pink elephants or purple pussy cats. <laughs> you know, but it was crowded. But I, it, if you ask me which was better, I would say Excalibur. That was more fun. Uh, Limelight was a little nuts. Yeah, it was crazy. Excalibur was crazy, but it was, they had more variety of fun there to me. So that, uh, I never been, I never went back there again. Never. I used to pass by it. I used to, uh, and then, um, then the company moved down. Well, not my, my part of the company that is, you know, the sec, uh, moved to nearby on LaSalle street. And I saw the building. And I never went inside. But I told people, you know, I've been there, you know, like that. And uh, I only saw it. I never went inside. I never uh, went out again with anybody to this place ever. And that was in business for a long time. And then it closed. And then it became Castle Chicago, you know, like that. Uh, I don't know how long it lasted. Not sure. Uh, it was... Uh, Another um, another nightclub, and uh, this I I didn't I never went there. I don't know how it was. No idea, like that. Okay, and then uh, after oh you know I found some history after it moved uh, the Chicago Historical Society moved in 1932. Uh, it was it's been the Lower Order of Moose Lodge. <laughs> It's probably a moose head there like that. And uh, so Excalibur closed in 2012 and they renovated it. And then the uh, then castle opened and they they made it into three nightclubs, a restaurant and, you know, private parties. So, you know, if you want to uh, reserve a party, go ahead. Um, one thing I want to mention when it was uh, Excalibur, they had a, a section like a nightclub called Vision. I, I don't know much about that. Uh, no idea. Okay. So, uh, so the, the, uh, 
Let's see, when did it close? So uh, Castle closed uh, maybe a couple of years or something. Like that. I'm not sure. Uh, so yeah, so it closed uh, later on, and now uh, it is called Tao, T A O. It's like an Asian theme club restaurant. It's still open. So uh, maybe someday I might go see that. And, uh, you know, the structure is still there. The building's still the same. But I think it's a little more sedated or more uh, relaxed atmosphere. So far, it's doing well, from what I heard. I don't know. So, uh, so it's a nightclub, it's a restaurant. So, you know, the River North area is still hopping. You know, uh, people who live in the area go out, you know, have a drink, have dinner, or people from out of town, you know, stay for the weekend and then go there and enjoy themselves. That's kind of cool. There it is. You know, when I went to uh, Limelight in the 80s, you know, the 80s was a crazy time, you know, but a fun decade. It was a fun decade. It really was, you know. <laughs> I still remember the mullets from the hair. <laughs> and the girls with the crazy makeup. <laughs> and they, uh, a few of them dressed like Madonna. <laughs> um, those were the days. They yeah, really were. Okay. All right. Next up, I'm going to talk about putty pups. Okay, I'm going to talk about briefly. Uh... Pony Pops, uh, before I get started, I'm going to play a commercial for Pony Pops. This commercial is from the 1980s, and this one does not feature Bill Cosby. I'll explain that after the commercial is played. It's very rare. So just sit back and relax and listen to a uh, commercial from the 1980s for Jello Pudding Pops. And I'll be right back, folks. Thank you. We dance with friends, it's really great. One just never stops. Good times on the ship. Jello pudding pops. Hey guys, look what I got. Jello pudding pops. It's creamy jello pudding frozen on a stick. Okay, everyone, I'm back. I hope you enjoyed the commercial for Jello Pudding Pops. This one featured without Bill Cosby, um, for reasons we know why. Um, I, I wanted to, but you know, uh, he's he was been in the news uh, for the past few years. Uh, he got involved with a lot of uh, legal troubles. You know, I'm, I'm not going to talk about that on this show. You know, I, I like Bill Cosby. I always have, but. Uh, it's inappropriate for the show, you know, but he's been a spokesman for Jell-O for many, many years since the seventies. And then I think he stopped in the nineties, right around the time the Cosby show ended, maybe after that. You know. So anyway, the pudding pops were, uh, they were marketed by general foods, uh, so uh, Bill Cosby, the comedian, he was the marketing, uh, he was a spokesman. So he was on TV a lot, you know, uh, peddling those things, <laughs> you know, he's, you know, and, you know, uh, so and he was with a bunch of kids and all that. He played an ice cream man and all like that. And you can see those commercials on YouTube if you like. So that was introduced late in the 70s. Uh, in, according to a website in Baton Rouge, Louisiana, and then it just took off. And uh, then it became more popular in the 1980s. Uh, I don't know if they featured commercials before Bill Cosby did. Maybe. I, I don't know. But he, they were a big hit. And then when he um, was a spokesman for that, it were huge. They were like, oh, wow. They just took, it was amazing. And uh, so 
Uh, you know, the funny thing about this, my brother started buying those. My mom didn't. I don't know why. She overlooked them for some strange reason. I don't know. I don't know what happened. <laughs> so, so my brother who was living with us at the time. He bought a box of them and then uh, first were chocolate. They were chocolate, and they said, "Oh, these are good." You know, I tried one for the first time, like it was in the mid '80s. Oh, they were smooth. You know, it's like a popsicle, better than a popsicle, but they were a smooth. It's like gelato in a way, uh, but they were great, and they were skinny, um, not not as thick and wide as a fudgicle, you know. Like popsicle, the popsicle brand made, and uh, so it came in three flavors: chocolate, vanilla, and chocolate vanilla swirl. Uh, I like the chocolate vanilla swirl. I did, but the, to be honest, I like the chocolate one. <laughs> vanilla was okay; it was it was good. But uh, yeah, I, if I had a choice between those three, I would choose the chocolate chocolate vanilla swirl second, and the vanilla third those were the only three flavors that i know of i don't think they made any other you know they didn't make other pudding flavors like for example butterscotch pistachio uh what else chocolate fudge no you know like the jello brands uh they made what other ones like banana no lemon no <laughs> so so the product went on for until the 90s and then for some weird reason uh this stopped the reason was uh they were no longer profitable which was yeah like i said before it was odd you like that and uh so they stopped about i don't know mid 90s late 90s or something like that i never noticed like that so th that was a shame like that so they were introduced in 2004 under the brand name popsicle okay uh they were the difference was it was it was a different shape and uh it wasn't the same and then it lasted about you know, seven years and uh so uh i guess that's the reason why i guess people want the original flavors or the what it was before you know so i guess not that didn't happen which is a shame and uh so th the ingredients you know it had 90 calories uh, and three grams of fat and 15 grams of carbohydrates so that wasn't too bad it's a nice dessert it was sweet of course you know you can eat i've never eaten two just one's enough you know because i love popsicles you know like that <laughs> one thing i want to mention uh they uh jello came out with gel jello gelatin pops uh i'm not sure when that came out not exactly sure i could find uh um the history of that no, i don't know because uh maybe about the same time and i think i maybe not i think i think it came out much later much later than that and uh the flavors they had of jello gelatin pops uh were um let's see you know i had it right here and i, I forgot okay I think it was like, yeah, here it is. They had strawberry, orange, grape, and cherry. Okay. I think they came out with other flavors uh, later on. Uh, they had, uh, I think they had raspberry. Yeah, they had that. So uh, I don't know when it started. I don't know when it uh, discontinued. So I'm the, I have no idea. I don't know. I did try a couple. Yeah, I think my mother bought them a couple of times, and uh, they were okay. It's like frozen jello. You know, it's fruity. You know, but I prefer chocolate. <laughs> so yeah, so I think it came. Those came from the late '80s uh, after pudding pops. They did that. Of course, you know what's famous about jello. You know, jello. 
is a is a is a very uh is a product that's been around for ages you know it's been advertised uh on the radio television you know then people make fun of it it's still yeah it's still good you know like that i love their puddings you know or they make the golden egg custard tapioca you know and uh let's see Jello molds, all kinds of uh, wonderful recipes like that. So, you know, it's sh- in my opinion, I think Jello pudding pot should come back. I think it should come back. Why not? You never know. That'd be awesome, but I don't see that happening. No, 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 no. That's not gonna happen. <laughs> Yeah, that's a shame. Okay. You know, the fu- one last thing about this, you know, um, the Pudding Pops had 90 calories uh, per, you know, bar. The the Gelatin Pops had 35. So if you were on a diet or trying to cut up, you know, not to have any sweets or, you know, trying to cut down, this was perfect. You know, yeah, that we need that today. <laughs> Especially me. Okay. So that's it for this show. Uh, I'll do a recap of what I talked about. I talked about the Limelight slash Excalibur nightclub in Chicago. And also talk about Jello Pudding Pops. Okay. And uh, this podcast will be published later on today, wherever podcasts are available. Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, Spotify, Amazon Music, also on Overcast, Breaker. Also, will be uh, posted on my blog, www.fanchicagoland.blog. Also, it'll be on my YouTube channel, Fan Chicago and Stories. People, st- people still ask me. They even asked me yesterday, where do I find your podcast? Where do I listen to your podcast? What's the easiest uh, way to listen? The easiest way is go to YouTube. Do a search, Fan of Chicago and Stories. You find it, subscribe it, you listen to it, and listen to previous episodes if you like. You know, take your time, and they're always there. You know, uh, people have told me that's the most uh, easiest way to listen. You know, you can listen on your uh, desktop, your iPad, you know, your tablet, or your phone, you know. Also, this will be posted on my social media accounts, Facebook X, formerly Twitter, LinkedIn, Reddit, uh, Instagram. There's the link. Uh, what else? It's on threads. Also, TikTok. Also, Blue Sky. It's, a new, it's not a new app. It's been around for a while. You can uh, check it out. You know, I heard Blue Sky now. Anyone can sign up. You don't need an invitation. Just sign up, and you'll find me there. You can find me there. Okay. Uh, I will not do a podcast episode Tuesday. Uh, I have somewhere to go, uh, which is a shame. But, uh, so yeah, like I said, I have somewhere to go. So I won't be able to do one. I'll do one next weekend. And then I'll just, you know, and I'll think of something I'll talk about. I have an idea what I'm going to discuss. You know, so, yeah. I just thought of something. <laughs> Isn't that amazing? Okay. So um, this is Pico Science, your host for Van Chicago Land Stories. Uh, thank you for joining me. I uh, had a wonderful, wonderful time uh, talking to you. Uh, today is a nice sunny day, kind of chilly. It's February. You know, yesterday was cold. Ooh, very cold. You know, I didn't do a podcast episode because I had uh, breakfast with my friend, the one I talked about earlier. And, uh, you know, I needed a break. So that was good. Okay. So here's Bye Bye for me. And here's a little traveling music with Ray Rayner saying bye, bye, bye. Take care, everyone, and so long. We have to go. Bye, bye, bye. <laughs>